one of the big things uh, for now, I think, as as we as we look at our our world and and the and the struggles of it, both in our particularities and our local places and and recognizing ourselves as a global community, I think Nano's Nano story. Uh, is really important. The energy of her story is really important. Like the energies of our stories are really important. And I think at this time in our history, we really need to um, be speaking of her in a way that recognizes uh, that her charism and her energy is an energy that doesn't belong tightly to anybody. What's going on is an energy to set the charism of Nano free. And so I think um, um, let's set Nano's spirit free. We've always been available for being of service in any part of the world if we were asked, which is what Nano did. So that has always been for me a, a legacy that even though we're local, we also can think and react globally when we're asked. So we have St. Bernard's Elementary School, St. Bernard's High School, and in love to St. Leo's. Um, Nano is so alive in that, in those buildings. You walk in the door at St. Leo's and you see this tree on the table, the paper one, but it says one step beyond. And the children talk about taking one step and reaching out even in the school community itself, or reaching out to the elderly. So, you know, we've made our mark on the school. We handed it over to lay people who had taught with us, or were students of ours, who till this day talk about Nano Lego. I think one way that our congregations today can carry forth um, Nano's legacy is to um, work for systemic change and that involves um, government systems, not just government systems as NANO worked with um, our corporations today as far as our finances are concerned and other societal um, institutions. Our community works at systematic change by being part of the seventh generation interfaith coalition for a responsible investment um, which advocates for improving human rights and taking care of the earth. Well, I, I had the opportunity to be at the gathering uh, for a period of time. And what an incredible experience to see the legacy of Nano in the women who were gathered there from all over the world. And seeing Nano's face in all kinds of different colors and shapes and ages. And it, it was a wonderful experience. My, my deepest experience, perhaps, and, and reflections would come from being a member of the Newfoundland community, the Newfoundland unit. And um, when, I see, when I see her legacy in its, if you like, in its global sense and, its, and what I know in its very particular sense, I can, I can see and, and have a great sense that her legacy is, is very present and very alive and attentive to many of the same things that she herself was very attentive to. For me, Nano's legacy, I think of two things. She left us those words, love one another. And I think she meant by that not only in our own communities, but also the care and compassion we would show for the people to whom we minister. And she also left us a community, a community where we could live together and support each other in our search for God in our lives and for in our efforts to bring about you know, peace and justice in the world or God's kingdom here on earth. El legado que Nano Nagle fundadora de las Hermanas de la Presentación, nos dejó, eh, sigue vivo en nuestros corazones, especialmente eh, la relación con Dios que ella tuvo y que eso se podía ver en sus, 
en su manera de vivir cada día, en sus obras, en el amor que ella demostró hacia la gente de ese tiempo, especialmente a los niños que estaban marginados, sin educación. Entonces, es eso lo que en es, hasta ahora sigue eh, empujándonos a, a trabajar por el reino de Dios. Eh, Nanonale nos inspiró a amar a Dios ardientemente con todo el corazón y entregarnos completamente a Dios, confiando nuestras vidas todo lo que somos, todo lo que tenemos para usar en bien del reino de Dios. The prior part of our sisters, um, that's one thing that I, I really would say that's the legacy of Nano. As we all know, she spent hours in prayer. And I would say that that was the source of her ministry to the people and I would say it's not written anywhere that I know of but I'd say her prayer and discernment what she is to do next and what she is to do next when something looks like a failure um, I think that's still very much that we live on to this day and then the aspect of looking at what's happening around us and trying to respond to the needs, the current needs of our time. That's one more. And the, the sisters in Fargo used to say, doing what needs to be done. Um, and I say, yeah, that's still true to this day. And I would say, um, but that's propelled or compelled by the prayer of the sisters. As I feel very strongly that I see today a great deal of Nano's legacy being carried into the world today through the sisters and through the associates. And one of the things with her legacy is she always reached out to the poor. But her, her sense of reaching out to the poor was based on her prayer life. She spent a great deal of time early in the morning in front of the Blessed Sacrament praying. And out of that, she responded to the needs of the people of her time. She could have had a very comfortable life, but she chose, it was her choice to reach out and to do something more. And I see that today in the sisters and the associates. Many of them started in a particular ministry of education and as time went on and they quotes retired They really didn't retire, but they moved on into an out outreach to the poor. First of all, through our ongoing practice of contemplation, personal and communal, resonating with uh, Nano's practice of long hours of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. Nano's dying wish was that we would love one another. And so a second example of Living the Legacy of Nano is in our uh, community sacred circles, which we've uh, initiated the last several years, which uh, includes small groups of sisters coming together several times a year on a regular basis to pray and discuss and share personally uh, for the sake of um, increasing support and uh, and uh, developing relationships. And then uh, Nano's light, uh, her lantern, is continued to be carried forth in a third example, and that would be in our ministries. We know how Nano uh, so generously uh, spent herself uh, serving the poor, and I see that same kind of uh, attitude and generosity and ministering hearts in our sisters today and in our enthusiastic associates uh, reaching out to the voiceless and the marginalized and meeting a variety of needs and i think that the legacy 
is fully alive in the ministries that are taking place on the island of Newfoundland, in the, in the various districts, because we have a big island here, as you know, yes. And I, I firmly believe that her, her legacy is, is perennial. It's like it's everlasting, because it really touches the heart of things. And, um, and I think Nana was a heart person who loved, loved the poor and loved everybody. And um, Nano, she actually risked her life for her vision. And now I feel it's our task to bring forth, to keep the lantern alight, keep it burning brightly, so that people will once again be, uh, really they will probably love Jesus more. And so I did think of what was uh, written in 30 years later by Dr. Copenhagen of how she had really hoped to have a refuge for prostituted women. And uh, this is, is happening in many different ways by having a safe house, but also in the education and letting people know about trafficked women. And then the other part of the legacy is where she said anywhere in the world and our sisters have done wonderful missionary activities going to different places. But now it's a very interesting thing has happened, and that is that the people are coming to us. They're coming to us as refugees from these countries that we had been going to in uh, the past. I guess the greatest gift that I can find that Nana would give us is just to be who you are. For years we are defined, we were teachers, we were professors, we were uh, nurses. Everything was, what sister do you do? Not sister, who are you? What would Nano say to us at this point? She would say, love one another, be respectful, listen to one another, smile, be gracious, stop talking about your aches and pains. We can still help the poor by many, many ways. We can still give to others just by being who we are. Most of all, we can spend more time in the presence of Christ. And in this Christ, we will walk into a future and we will just be. Nano's legacy has um, lived up to her vision for sure. She, um, Nano said, in her quotes at one point that if she could be of service anywhere in the world, she would willingly do so. And that hope or that vision has definitely come true because her vision of serving the most oppressed, vulnerable people in the world has happened. Her heart has reached throughout the whole world and her spirit has reached throughout the whole world. I worked in Zambia for seven years, and even just the diversity within the congregation, the diverse cultures, is such a blessing. We, um, we learn a lot from each other. We grow a lot and are challenged a lot from each other as sisters because there's such great diversity. And all the sisters, in some way, all the congregations throughout the whole world in some way have a thread of Nano's vision running through ev everything they do and all of who they are. Here in our own community, I see um, a great sense of compassion. We just had our assembly this last weekend and our um, associates were present too. And it was really very heartwarming to see how compassionate and passionate um, both sisters and associates are. But for Nano, it wasn't always all work. We know that when in her earlier days, she loved to socialize and she loved to have fun. And as a teacher, she really was uh, cognizant of her students and she delighted in them. And she was also a very lighthearted person. 
So when our sisters and associates gather, we have a lot of fun. We have a spirit of joy and laughter. And I think it comes from knowing that we are living nano spirit. Well, I see the legacy of nano being carried out in our sisters and associates. I see women and men active in ministries that directly touch the lives and hearts of individuals and families. And our hope is that this is going to continue. I also see our sisters who are enabled by walkers and hearing aids, full of life and open spirits. And we too are weaving and threading prayer and Eucharist in everything we do. By engaging people in all of this, all these threads will weave the picture that God intends. One of the things that I really see that I think is important or vital is the commitment that many of the employees have to, whether it be in the ministry or at the college or at the convent, wherever that happens to be, but truly having a deep commitment to carrying on the ministries and with that, really deepening their knowledge of nano. In particular, a lot of our cogeners really are connecting to the social justice issues and really feeling like it's important for them as cogeners to carry on and do what the sisters have been doing and make sure that they know about those social justice issues, that they are looking at those that are underserved, that they are looking at the things that happen in the world and seeing themselves as the heart and the hand of the sisters if they're not present. I see Nano pretty much everywhere. I do. I see it every day that I go into the convent. Our staff alone right now is almost like a melting pot for the world. Like, like our doors have been open to um, people that are struggling from other countries. Uh, this year we all brought mitts and hats and gloves and coats and boots and blankets and one day in December three or four of our staff members just took it all and went to the streets where the homeless live and just gave it. So like for me that you know that speaks volumes of what influence the sisters have had and like how they carry on their day-to-day -day, uh, life as that like because nano comes through in so many different areas for them you know like we have a sister who's 101 she has two students for some people it might be so insignificant but for me it speaks volumes as to to what they're all about what I've taken away is that um, it's no good to just write what we want to do like we have to put it into action and I think in the next five or six years like I think we're going to see changes and more of what our sisters and our associates and our friends of Nano are all about. Nano is so pleased and so honored I'm sure to see that her her hope that her her determination has brought her her vision for living the gospel and giving voice to the voiceless that that has lived 300 years down the road and i'm sure that it's going to live for a lot longer